the end. So today we're going to uh, thank you for signing up. If you supported the planner on Kickstarter or if you bought yourself a daily planner, maybe you heard about it on the Lab Coat Agents Facebook group or some other place, I am I'm grateful to you. Um, I am a broker myself and uh, I was originally a high school English teacher and I also taught college English and writing and really just got into real estate a little bit later in life, um, I did some educational textbook development in Boston for eight or 10 years. And then as my husband, who is kind of a real estate rainmaker in Southern California, got super busy and had some agents on his team, I said, you know, my kids were in elementary school, maybe I'll get my license to help him. And this is the time of flip phones. So if he needed help with a contract, I began to think, because I wasn't 22 anymore, huh, maybe I should have my license so that if I make a mistake, um, it, you know, were covered. So I got my license to sell, but I wasn't really a salesperson. I was doing stuff around the office, you know, supporting him as a, as a, uh, doing contracts, doing paperwork for the team, things like that. And you know how life changes and snowballs. And then I got my broker's license. And then as he got busier and busier and the market began to fall in 2007, uh, his team had like 40 short sale listings all of a sudden. So I became kind of this person that was knowledgeable in negotiating short sales. And that actually became this huge thing. We decided uh, we saw a real void with agents throughout California because none of us really knew how to do short sales. But I was pretty successful at it. So I created a whole team of people who negotiated short sales for other agents throughout California. And we moved off and we created our own brokerage. And then um, the, obviously short sales, there's still some, I still have that team and I do a lot of other things as well. But what I found is that I just love when people are, are, what do you want to call it? Uber productive, super productive. It makes, you know, there are always quicker and easier ways to do things. And the thing about real estate is there's so much going on and there's so much to do that if we can find these little hacks or ways to do things more quickly, I think that um, we can all find more time in our day either to be with our family or to do the things that we love um, so that we're not always stressing about real estate. So really um, my love for organizing and stuff like that comes from my love for doing fun things too because I want to find time for those. So I hope that uh, in the webinar today and through the planner, if you did buy one, you were able to find and earmark a little extra time and also create some good processes that will give you more buyer and seller leads. So that's really what we're going to talk about um, today in in the meeting. And so thanks to all of you that are continuing to write in. If you're just getting on the call, hang with us and download uh, the PDF if you'd like to um, from the link at the corner. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the pipeline planner itself. I'm gonna provide some tactics for setting personal and professional goals. I know we're already into February, but every day is a great day to begin if you haven't already. And some, some simple strategies for understanding your current business. Sometimes uh, you can't see the forest through the trees, and I'm going to talk about that. And then um, I'm really going to talk a lot about uh, working within your behavioral strengths. I'm a strong believer that if you just focus on what you do best and push the rest to somebody else, you will just uh, you'll love your life more, and you'll also find more time in the day, and you'll even be more successful. And I'm going to share some of the methods used by agents in my office or things that I've devised to increase efficiency for real estate agents. And again, if you don't have a pipeline planner, that's okay. Um, if you just want to follow along, um, you can grab that free sample <coughs> from the PDF that I've shared. So, sorry, a little, okay. All right, so I saw this quote, I said, a goal without a plan is just a wish. And I do think that there's something very, very magical that happens when you write stuff down. Um, I'm not sure if you've read uh, The Miracle Morning or The Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents. Uh, I, did, I read The Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents and I found that it was, it was a very simple book but it really talked about some good morning habits that um, can help real estate agents. And of course, the first one is to exercise, you know, drink water, find time to meditate. So in my way that I started to um, meditate or to focus was to sit down, 
and I'm not a morning exercise. Well, I'm only a morning exerciser on the weekends. During the week, I'm an afternoon exerciser. So in the mornings, I would sit down, I'd have my coffee, and I'd really make a list of what I needed to get done. And it is true that when you write stuff down, then you can refer back to it and you just start crossing it off the list. Um, sometimes the list looks so long, but, but it only takes you 15 minutes to blast through the whole thing. So it's really an important aspect of your day uh, and your business to write down your main goals. I'm going to talk, and I'm going to talk a little in a little bit about the difference between setting daily goals or targets and just writing down, you know, pick up Junior from swim practice, um, because there is, there, those are very very different things. Uh, but but you know, and I'm sure you if uh, you've heard that all of life is peaks and valleys. But John Wooden says, don't let the peaks get too high or the valleys get too low. And one of the things that happens in real estate for a lot of agents, I'm sure that those of you who've been in real estate for a while will agree, is that when you've got a lot of sales pending, you get so focused on the drama and the problems of the sales that you lose your lead generation time or your prospecting time. And so what happens is after you have all those closings and you have your bank account is looking good, then all of a sudden you've got nothing going on and those are the valleys. So we have to, do, one of the things that's really important to do is to figure out what your comfort zone is so that those peaks don't get too high and those valleys don't get too low, that there's not too much of a gap between closings. So um, I, I think what happens is if, if you imagine, I mentioned spinning plates already before we got started, is I um, I always think of real estate like when you're at the circus and the guy, I don't know if he has sticks or pencils and he's spinning all these different china plates. And um, you know he can only spin so many because if he puts one more up there, they're all gonna break because they're all gonna fall on the ground. So how many can you spin? What is your comfort zone? And if you have too many plates spinning, then obviously what's gonna happen is it's all gonna break down. So finding that kind of middle of the road comfort zone that works for you. And some people are obviously stronger multitaskers than others. And some people have more, um, much larger closing goals than others. And so just to, um, to find your own perfect balance is and comfort zone is very, very important. So how is Pipeline Planner organized? So um, as for, for so when we talk about business planning, people get really, really frustrated. But the truth is 90% of people who feel that they failed did not put their goals in writing. And so I, I tried, so Pipeline Planner was born out of a planner that I did in 2013. In 2013, and you can still get that on Amazon or you can get it through my office, but in 2013 I created something called the Essential Daily Planner for Real Estate Agents. And that was my first stab at a planner. What I really was kind of tired of, and as I kind of told you a little bit about my life in the very beginning, what I was really tired of when I was associated with the franchise with my husband uh, was that when I would go to the office to help him, there would be all of these people kind of um, around the water cooler in the kitchen talking about, no, this is again, mid 2000s dancing with the stars. You know, did you watch dancing with the stars last night and all this? And I was thinking, oh my gosh, I don't I, I, really, while it's important to be social, I found real estate is the kind of thing when you do things, like that, you're not really focusing on building your business. So I found that there's always something to do every day that can build your business. So in the first planner, the Essential Daily Planner for Real Estate Agents, I really focused a lot on what those people that are talking about dancing with the stars all the time could be doing with their time. So almost every day of the week, the way that was structured, there was a little tip or activity. Like if you're not sure what to do with your business, um, here's a little quick tip. If you've got nothing to do today, here's something that you can do that will build your business or strengthen your marketing, things like that. So the planner itself, the new one, took the best components of that old planner and tip, the tips were one of those components and added some other things. Now one of the other things that I really feel strongly about, I put into the introduction of this one, is a production analysis chart because you have to know where you are, if you, you know, in order to map out your GPS to success. So the production analysis chart and the income calculator and the prospect calculator can all help you with that. Now, if um, there are, at melissazavala.com, there are Excel spreadsheets that are available for download if you just sign up on the front page 
for um, an income calculator and a prospect calculator. You just plug in a few things. You'll get delivered the spreadsheets. You just plug in a few numbers, and it will tell you everything you need to know. But the introduction pages of the the there are about 25 of them of the planner really really want you to hunker down for a good 15 minutes and get yourself in gear before you move forward so um and then we've got these plan your week pages so you the plan your week pages i this is a new thing in pipeline planner that was not in the daily planner for real estate agents so the, those plan your week pages really really help you refer by referring back to the um the income though those pages in the introduction which i will go over a couple of those in a few minutes um and just transferring your data so that you know how much you need to do each week if you need a listing a week two listings a week two listings a month just getting that all organized a few of the agents that I've spoken with that are very, very successful say that spending a couple of minutes at the beginning of the week or even the Sunday night thinking about what am I going to accomplish this week and how am I going to get that done has made a, a, a real a real change in their business. If I go, So I tested that out and I went into an office meeting on a Monday morning and I said, what are you going to do today? Uh, I'm going to the meeting and then I'm not exactly sure I'm going to go to my desk and figure it out. But those agents that kind of strategized in advance about their day had much better control of their business and actually were the ones that were bigger producers. So uh, listing the inbound and outbound marketing activities in, in your plan your week section and then send, setting a stretch goal. So what is your stretch goal? Um, it, you know, it would be a really spectacular week if I got two listings, if I had two listings appointments, if I completed my listing presentation on my iPad so it's ready for next week. You know, what is your, what is that awesome thing? And then I took my top tips from the Essential Daily Planner for Real Estate Agents and I just did one per week. And they're structured, they're balanced using the kind of like my teaching background, they're balanced in such a way so that if you do them in order, by the end of the planner, you'll have this rock solid foundation for your business. So the one here says develop a marketing calendar that outlines your inbound and outbound marketing plans. Don't forget to include both print and online activities. So that's okay for agents that have some experience making a marketing calendar and a plan. For those that don't, you might be scratching your head, and that's okay too. You can go to melissazavala.com, or you can watch videos on my YouTube channel that can talk that talk more about marketing and making plans for that. So there is some support on the website for all of those tips. So then there's then there's the daily pages. Okay, some people are saying the audio is cutting in and out. Remember, you will get the replay. That could be your bandwidth. That could be my bandwidth, and I'm really, really sorry about that. But you will get the re replay, so you can you can get back to that if you couldn't hear anything. I'm sorry. So these were these daily pages, and when I talked a little bit ago about the Miracle Morning for real estate agents. Um, one of the things that when I was testing out the tips I was finding is I was writing down 20 or 30 things that I needed to do each day. And that was not good because what I found was, yes, I was getting most everything done, but I was also extremely anxious. So um, people like Stephen Covey and David Allen and, and people that are leaders in kind of the organizational industry, what they say is you should set a very minimum number of daily targets. Not only will it give you a sense of, a, of um, purpose and you know motivation and a really good feeling accomplishment when you get them done, but in addition to that, it will really um, help you get focused. I want you to focus your targets on real things that are going to result in new buyers or sellers for sales. So who do you have that you can show property to? By, so your, your today's target is convince so-and-so to write an offer on X property. Um, you know, and if he needs to sell his house, you know, work on preparing the listing. Try and think about your, your, your people, your prospects as a business and how you can maybe even link buyers and sellers together to make multiple sales out of one uh, single prospect or one, you know, if you've got two people and one wants a single family in one community and the other one wants to sell his own, can you can you link those two together to make uh, like two 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 purchases in a sale? You know, so if you can think about your business like that, you um, you can really uh, kind of amplify your income. And then over here, uh, only on each Monday, we heard from a lot of agents that they think they need help with time management. So we've got some uh, time management tips every Monday, only on Monday. And yes, it is undated. 
why is the planner undated? Uh, I'll probably go over this at the end, and people, I've got a little bit of feedback about that. Some people don't write in like writing in the dates, but what I found is there's nothing good. If you didn't do anything in January, I saw that my friend Ivan um, this morning wrote on Facebook, not to name names, but he said that he hadn't been to the gym yet this year. Don't judge, he was starting today. That's kind of how I feel about um, real estate planning. It's okay that it's not January 1st. Just get started today or tomorrow. And that's why I want it undated so that you could start any Monday to get your, you know, to um, reinvigorate your business. And then we've got some place to write down your daily activities. I realize and recognize that it's small, but I know that you're also using your cell phone and your computer and that this is, should be just something to fall back on. And then if, you, if you're out in the field, the other thing is I really wanted you to say, for me, I know a lot of people depend on their mobile phone and I love my mobile phone. But so when I am on the phone in my car and somebody tells me something, I am not going to switch to the notes on my phone. I'm gonna wanna open a book or note something. And so that's why I like um, having a single book where I can keep all of my notes. Because if not, I'm gonna write it on the back of my car registration or on a little receipt from when I grab some coffee at Starbucks. And then I'm gonna lose that paper and I'm not gonna be in control of my business. So keeping your pipeline here and making your notes, using these pages to make any notes that you want, even if they're not within the lines or whatever, as long as you have everything in one book, you will have, you will make a huge, um, you know, forward step in your business. And then, you know, and analyzing what was the moment today that made me most excited or proud and uh, reflect on something you learned today, your wins and, uh, and the lessons learned. And then if you want to use a, a mileage or expense thing to jot down some of that stuff, if you're not using an app for that, we'd love some spots for you down here. So everything was done on these daily pages with a lot of purpose in mind. And then we've got some weekly, weekly wrap-up pages. So I had once heard that people need to reinvent themselves every 10 years. And then I heard P, uh, some people say, but in real estate, it's every five years. I honestly think that every week we need to be reconsidering where we are in our business and how we need to make a change in order to stay on top of things. Now, if you bought the planner in Kickstarter, because we initially launched it as a Kickstarter and we did that in October, that was a one month period where uh, with my team, we had to almost be looking, so our goal was $10,000. So we had to be looking constantly to see if we were gonna be making our goal. Now, it turned out we exceeded our goal by about five or $6,000, but, uh, in, in sales of planners, but we needed to be retooling, retweaking our marketing, who were we gonna reach out to in order to drive more traffic to the website so that we could get more people interested in the planner. Um, so the same thing kind of with your business, you need to reflect on your business, was the week a good one? What worked? Who did I talk to? Where's the income coming from? So using those weekly wrap up pages to consider and reflect on your business and how to make it better, will help you to make week two or week three even better than week one. And then of course, the uh, a big thing is the month in review. So doing the same thing again at the end of the month because if you use those intro pages, you're going to be calculating you know, how many listings you need a month uh, and a week even, but at the end of the month, you'll know how you're doing if you're uh, on task or not. So I'm already working with the agents in my office, and some of them had some pretty lofty goals, and January didn't start so well. So um, just having a look at this stuff and filling out these pages is really, really helpful in that area. And then the last thing see, is that it's really good to reflect on your business. So I go to yoga four days a week. So I have like this quiet time with no cell phone when I'm not dying in these crazy postures. I'm actually thinking about, you know, myself, my family, things I can do better and differently. Just my mind is kind of, you know, all over the place. But it, it, it's nice to have that quiet time to yourself. And as someone, obviously, I told you I used to teach English. I can tell you that writing essays and writing itself sometimes gets you to directions you didn't know were deep within you. So I don't know if you had that experience in college or in high school with writing, but Sometimes when you keep a diary, you can really notice or you make comments and you pull things out that you're very surprised about. So we provided these extra pages 
uh, one per week in order to um, give you the opportunity to get some motivation from some really uh, wonderful, uh, you know, leaders in history and uh, in, in politics and in business and um, and also then to how, how those relate to considering your own self. So you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. That's one of them, Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar was a famous motivational speaker. Who or what motivates you to be the best that you can be? So do you have a person that you look up to in your business? Um, does, does, is your family motivating you? You know, what, what motivates you? So just really thinking about that and getting deep down. And you can even use this to make notes, draw pictures, uh, take notes in a phone call. There's just some blank space to do what you want. So now, now that we've got that, uh, so that's kind of an overview of the planner. So everything, we, despite the fact that, and I've gotten some emails from some people that don't like certain aspects, and if you're one of those people that some things work for you and some things don't, you're welcome to email me and let me know, and you can email share at mypipelineproducts.com. And when we do our second um, order, we may be implementing some of your feedback, because it's really, really helpful to us. The more people that use it and give us feedback, uh, the changes, you know, we can make some of those changes. But the, the thing is, I just want you to know a lot of stuff when we get this feedback, I go, oh, I thought about this a while. And, and I had a group of 138 people, uh, agents from throughout the United States uh, in it on a uh, pipeline planner launch team that were working with me kind of as a focus group for about 10 months before we launched the planner. So I did get a lot of feedback on a lot of things. So hopefully most of the kinks were worked out in advance. So it's really under important with regard to your own career to really consider the market of the moment. Before we got started, we were talking a bit about the real estate market and um, people were saying it's really popping in Arizona and Oklahoma and I said it was really popping in Southern California. But understanding and adjusting to the market of the moment is really, really important. So what do I mean by that? Well, I got into short short sales, as I told you before, because agents didn't understand the market at the moment. They weren't working, they weren't properly processing the short sales and dealing with the banks. So I found this void. But you understanding the market at the moment right now. Right now, let's think about what's going on. We've got this new president. We've got some crazy um, news reports. People are anxious, concerned, divided. Uh, uh, some people are worried about what's going to happen. Interest rates, Dodd-Frank going away, Fannie and Freddie. So you need to really, uh, I, for lack of a better phrase, bone up on that stuff so that you can speak to it. So you have your scripts ready in order to talk about that, to compel your prospective buyers and sellers to move forward and not be on the fence. So when you understand what's going on and you can uh, explain you know, why they shouldn't be concerned about that and educate buyers and sellers and address those issues, then you are one step ahead of the competition. So that's step one to really um, having a spectacular career in real estate and a spectacular year. And step two, and this is something that's in the introduction uh, that you either downloaded the PDF if you want to do this and don't have the planner. It's also in the front of the planner. Even for those of you that have the planner, you may want to download this from the PDF so you can print it out full page to use it because the planner is six by nine. It's really, and you can use this year after year, even, um, and it's a production analysis chart. Spend some time completing this. Thinking back on your previous year, if you, this is not your first year in real estate, and really figuring this out. What did I close? What are the addresses? What was the sales price? What was the source of the business? Were these buyer or seller leads? What community were they in? What property type was it? And look for patterns after you've written this all down. Okay, what are some patterns that you might see? You might see that you've done, you work with a lot of empty nesters. You might see that you work in a specific community. One of the agents in my office, uh, much to his chagrin, he realized that he became an authority on mobile home sales. Now, the reason I say much to his chagrin is because in Southern California, um, you know, single family residences sell for a lot more than mobile homes. So, you know, his commissions were a bit smaller on those. but. But this is, he had this kind of unexpected, uh, unique um, kind of, he became this authority or expert in this unexpected or unique area, and he can really now market to that to build his business. So I've had another agent that has done a lot with firefighters. Um, I had one, one experience when I was analyzing our own business with short sales. 
Um, and we we did about 2,000 of them for other, you know, just processing them for other agents. But when I was looking back on that book of business, I was able to track something like 17 of those negotiations to one single CPA that referred all of those clients to my office. So that's the kind of stuff that you're looking for. So, you know, and, and the way that worked was that the CPA referred one guy, like he went to his, to pick up his kid from daycare and met a guy and then he told that guy that, you know, our, we could help him and that guy told his neighbor. So just keeping track of those sources um, can really, really just point you in the right direction with your business. So some of the possible sources, um, in addition to things that I mentioned, communities, neighborhoods, might be specific agent referrals, um, and maybe asset management company, maybe your blog does really well, or your video blog, or Facebook, door knocking, cold calling, if you have events or seminars. Uh, open houses do really, really well. And uh, a, few, a few years ago, I suggested to two newer agents in my office, why don't you set a goal to do 48 open houses this year? And that, for both of those guys, when the year was over, that was their best year yet. Um, in 48 open houses doesn't mean one every weekend. A lot of times they would just do two in a weekend and take the following weekend off. So it was just committing to this big, big number and then sticking to it. And of course the results 18 months later looking back were very, very successful because not everyone converts right away. But there, these are all these different possible sources of business, sign call, social media, geographic farming, your website, pay-per-click, past clients, et cetera. And other areas and ways to examine your business, I've kind of touched on these already. Single moms, empty nesters, occupations, hobbies. Think about what you have in common with your clients. Uh, you, do you all like yoga? Are you all teachers? Do you, do you know them all from the library? And what do your clients have in common with each other? Sometimes you have nothing in common with the clients, but in my example, all those clients knew that same CPA. So that was like winner, winner, chicken dinner over there. And then calculate the total sales for the year. And again, it, uh, once you, this is the only calculation that you may want to do manually. You can make this into a spreadsheet also on your computer. And then um, once you have that, you can move on to calculating your average sales price. So these are the things that I have Excel spreadsheets for on melissazavala.com. If you can go on over there while I'm talking, and just sign up and you should get the links to the Excel spreadsheets via email. If you don't, you can email share at mypipelineproducts.com and I'll send you that stuff after the webinar today. So you can figure this out yourself. It's fairly simple math, but of course I'm addicted to spreadsheets, anything that, <laughs> that makes my life easier, so spreadsheets are pretty good too. So you've got your number of closed transactions on that previous page, and then the total price of all properties sold, and you divide the two and you'll get an average price per property, average sales price, and that's your average sales price. So now you've got to calculate your income. So if your average sales price um, is 400,000, now you're going to, or in this example, 250,000, you're going to calculate what is your commission, your bring home commission. So in this example, the person, the agent's average sales price is 250,000 and she brings home 52.50 per transaction and she wants to make 100,000 a year, so she needs 19 closings. And so all of this is in that front matter in Pipeline Planner, or you can uh, use the spreadsheets that I've mentioned in order to calculate that. But the key, and so you've got to figure out what is your goal, what is your income goal, uh, 100, 200, 450, you know, it depends on where you live in the United States, what your personal needs are, if you're doing this part-time or full-time, where you're at. Um, this is just an example. It is by no means, you know, everyone's got their own uh, course or pathway that they need to um, work on. So this is just a sample. And then you want to figure out, once you know that, how. so we said that that person needed 19 per year, 19 closings in order to make $100,000. Now, in order to do that, and this is the part that some people are not clear on, just because you meet someone and they say they want to buy, that does not a sale make. So the prospect to sale ratio, according to statistics, is 25 to 1. This means that for this agent to have 20 sales in 2017, she needs to talk to a total of 500 prospective buyers and sellers. 
And so with her 500 people, we're trying to figure out how many she needs a day. Now, this is if she works 30 days a month, which please don't do that. Um, she needs one to two a day. So if you're going to work uh, 20 days a month, then you probably need three a day in this example. So with three a day, so this is a, three is not that many. So if you just wake up in the morning and you say, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find three prospective buyers and sellers. You could be done by 10 a.m. with that and you can go about your day. And so, because remember, just because you meet someone, then you've got to refer them to a lender, and then it might take them two months to clean up their credit, then it might take them two months to find a property. So yes, they might close in 2017, but not this month. So you've got to be really cooking up those deals. Okay, um, of course my pause is me looking at uh, your comments and things. Okay, so the, the next thing I want to talk about is developing processes for your business. So in order to do that, I feel very strongly that step one is identifying your strengths. So how many of you have actually done a DISC assessment before? If you have done a DISC assessment, do you remember your results? If you have not done one, the best place to do one for free is at the Tony Robbins website. It's tonyrobbins.com slash ue slash disc hyphen profile dot php. And you can also just go to Google and type in Tony Robbins plus disc with a C assessment. So what a disc assessment is, is it's a, a behavioral traits and strengths assessment. And I've done, I think I've done it twice and my results were identical even though that was like five years apart each time. So it's the kind of thing that's probably not going to change barely at all from time to time if you do it twice over a period of years. So according to the, this formula for strengths identification, DISC stands for decisive or dominant, interactive or interpersonal, stable and cautious. And you'll get ranks up to 100% in each of these. So I'm very high D and I'm pretty low interpersonal and I'm high on cautious. And I've met, uh, I've met a lot of agents who are very high D and very high I. And uh, there's been a lot of research done and analysis done of top producing agents and they found that 95% of those mega agents, you know, the ones that close like hundreds of deals every year, are high D and high I. Now, there's nothing wrong with being high in these other areas, but what we're gonna do with those results is you're gonna figure out what is the best daily activity for me based on my results. Because if you're, do, if you're not high I and you're trying to do high I activities, you may not have the, as many, as, as high results, as, as uh, successful results as people who are very high I, if, if that makes sense. There are other uh, books that talk about uh, strengths identification, and here's two of them that I've also read, Strengths Finder 2.0 by Tom Rath and Stand Out by Marcus Buckingham. But if you just, just uh, take a screenshot of this, of course you're gonna get the replay later, type in Tony Robbins plus disc assessment and go get yourself a disc assessment um, within the next couple of days if, you, if you're looking for something to help you pick the best act activities to um, be successful in your business. And then with that, you've got to figure out also, now what income act act producing activities am I best at? So for me, remember I told you I'm high D and I'm high C. And I'm actually pretty good at stability, high on stability. So I can do my weekly email newsletters, my weekly social media scheduling. Those are activities I'm really good at and they generate a lot of income for me. Whereas it's difficult for some agents to find the time or uh, the interest um, to do that consistent stuff like blogging or e-newsletters, things like that. And those agents are probably high I and the best use of their time might be an open house or doing an, an event or things like that. And then also, this is a huge aspect of being successful in real estate. For me, remember, I own not only Short Sale Expedited, but Transaction 911. These are two companies that provide support and paperwork services for real estate agents. And what I found sometimes, and I mentioned this before, is that some agents can't see the forest, the trees, that there's... Um, they're so focused, uh, for example, with the transaction compliance business, we have a flat rate for 
free file that we do. And in California, there are 55 documents in every real estate transaction, more or less. So having a compliance officer to evaluate that and prepare that for your office will save you so much time. It might be, it might save you 10 hours. And if I asked you today, if I give you 15 hours, how many leads could you get? Well, you could do four open houses. If you have four open houses, how many leads could you get? So if you, if you could get two leads and each one ends up in a successful closing with an $8,000 check, then that compliance service of $400, $395, you just lost like $15,000. So consider time wasters, things that you can offset to other people while you do the most productive things that are gonna make you the biggest amount of money. Delivering signs. Your teenager could deliver the signs for you. You don't have to do it. Delivering flyers, your teenager could also do that for you. Meeting a home inspector. Now there are times when um, meeting a home inspector uh, is important for you to do as the agent with your clients, but there might be other times when you just need to unlock a door for a termite or pest control inspector. And to that end, um, it you know, then it might be okay for someone else to do that. Scanning documents. If you're if you've got an office system that requires you to upload each document as a separate scan, how many hours does that take you? And who could do that for you? If someone could do it for you for eight dollars an hour or five dollars an hour, if you know if it's a VA or from out of the United States, or if your kid could do that for you, or an assistant can do that for you while you're making more money doing other things, then that's what needs to happen. So you need to ask yourself, do I really have to do this or can someone else do it for me? And for me personally, it's often hard. I always think, oh, I could do it so much faster. So sometimes it's hard for to, to give someone else that responsibility if you have, like to have a lot of control, but it does free you up to do other things. So once you relinquish that control and find someone that you trust, you can be very, very successful. So identifying support staff. So, um, so now that I've mentioned some of these things, let's think about, you know, am I doing uh, the things that I should, shouldn't be doing? Can I um, offload them to support staff? And then as I just mentioned, I'm always thinking, but it only takes a few minutes, I'll do it myself. I'm sure you guys can do that, you say that too. The other thing is there are also preferred providers that you use that will help you and sometimes we forget about that. So as an example, um, title representatives, settlement companies, you know, if your client gives you a, che a personal check that needs to be delivered to escrow if you're in California or the settlement company or the title company, can't the title company send a courier? Do you really need to drive over and drop it off? You know, think about those things. And if that's the case, just leave it at the front desk and move on. So those are the kind of things that you can have other people help you out with that won't cost you a penny and will uh, free you up to do other things. And um, something that I'm a real big fan of as well is creating a process for everything that you do. And uh, to, I'll be honest, there are years that I've done more of this and years that I've done less of this. But if you can make a regimented list of activity, a list of regimented activities, and write down a process for each, then process, then it's not something you need to do yourself. So, for example. Um, there's a process for taking a listing. You know, you, you've got your list. If you hire a photographer, if you put it on Zillow, if you enter it in the MLS, all of those things are part of the process. So if you can write down that process, or one of the other things I like to do um, with shorter processes is you can make a screen video with Screen R or Screencast-O-Matic or QuickTime on a map, a Mac as you were doing the process and then you can share it with somebody else and then they'll see what you're doing and they can just watch the video and do it themselves the next time. So try to create a process for everything you do and just remember that if you've created a process, you don't need to do it yourself. So really focus again on those activities that will bring you the most revenue, whereas if you can create a process for it that's very specific, you can probably have someone else do it and you can free yourself up to do those really big money-making activities. So I mentioned listing management as an area with a process. Social media posting could have a process. I'm going to, I think I'm going to be doing a, a webinar in a few months about where, where to get ideas for social media posting. But you can just do, um, your, your Monday posts can be all, you know, before and after pictures of home remodels. Your Tuesday posts can be a meme. 
your Wednesday posts can be your new listings, your Thursday posts can be about your weekend open houses. I mean, you could have this regimented schedule that one day a week you schedule all those posts and you don't need to do it anymore. Or you, so that's a process and that will free you up. Marketing to your sphere of influence can have a process. Six, six letters a year, six emails a year, whatever it is. Transaction file management has a process. Email marketing has a process. Internet lead management has a process. Your daily prospecting, and if you do expireds and for sale by owners, I'm sure you have or can create a process for that. The deal is to create a schedule and repeat it over and over and over and over and sync it across all devices and use scheduling apps if you have to. And only break your schedule in an emergency. And for me, an angry client is not an emergency. It's like, what do they say, an error on your part doesn't constitute an, an emergency on mine. So if you've scheduled to come to the office to, um, to prospect for two hours and you hear that there's not a key in the lockbox, so that it disappeared from one of your listings, you can go over there after you finish your prospecting. Um, nothing's probably going to change in those two hours. So just earmarking that time and trying to keep control of that time when those things come up, it can be challenging. The other thing I've noticed, just test this. Test this for me today if you can. If you if you don't answer a phone call from someone and they get and they seem really anxious about something and they want you to call them back right away, try your best, unless it's obviously a matter you know, of health or safety, in which case do call, but try your best to wait an hour before calling back. And find and just just gauge it. If you call back in an hour and they say, Oh, I solved it already. Then you see, so sometimes, a lot of times, if you just let a few what are you, sleeping dogs lie, um, things resolve themselves, and that will free you up. So just just attempt that once or twice and see if it frees you up. And um, for me, like Friday is my marketing day when I do my blog posts, my email marketing. I get everything organized with regard to my advertising for the following week. And I try not to break that schedule unless it's an emergency. And um, it is sometimes hard, though, when we do that in the middle of the day and we run into an issue with a client and then we're up late doing that stuff. And that is a real challenge. And that's what gets us out of control. And that's where Pipeline Planner can really get you to hunker down and get organized again. So again, put everything on your calendar or on your planner. And there's, I, I, may, I, I mentioned some tools today, but let me mention a few more. I, it was great to have a really good CRM uh, for CRS, the Cert Council of Certif or Certified Residential Specialists. I'm going to be doing a webinar on how to select the best CRM later this year. Um, there are all sorts of CRMs. There's HubSpot, there's Streak, there's Contactually, Real, Realvolve, um, Reseo. There's just so many, I can't even uh, mention them all. But um, but having one that you like and using it every day is really going to be key to your success. Also, um, I like to use Evernote and Dropbox because they sync across all devices. And a nice calendar app. I am currently seeking a new calendar app. I was in love with Sunrise Calendar and then they got sold to Outlook and they're not available anymore on the iPhone. So. I've tried a few others and not been as happy, but um, a calendar app is very, very important. Social media management platform. So Hootsuite is a good one, or Buffer, something to manage all of your social media in one place. It saves you time and you can schedule posts and things like that. Of course, a reliable email provider. So let me tell you what I mean by that. Um, if you are using at gmail.com or at yahoo.com, that's okay. But you look like uh, you build your brand and you increase your brand and your audience by having a, your own domain as your email. And if you're going to do that, be very wary of certain companies, uh, particularly hosting companies that host websites and mail, because um, sometimes their, their email servers are not very reliable. I would really encourage you if you're going that route or you already are that route and you know what I'm talking about to look at switching to Google Apps for your email. So if you own, like I own at melissazavala.com, that's managed on Gmail. So I just go to gmail.com to check my email uh, and it's very, very reliable.
And of course, a pipeline planner can help and you either have one or you've downloaded a sample or you're not into paper planners and that's cool, but I'm still grateful that you're on the call today. Remember that 90% of people who feel that they failed did not put their goals in writing. So when, when you do put something in writing, it, it's just a very magical process because it gets it onto your plate where you can reflect on it, look at it, and take care of it. So that's very, very um, helpful in achieving your goals long term. So together, I hope I can help you craft a game-changing plan for success in 2017. And I hope that if you've purchased Pipeline Planner, you are able to use it in order to launch your business and take it to the next level. And again, I am eager for those of you that own the product to provide me with honest reviews by emailing me at share at mypipelineproducts.com. We will take every bit of your honest honesty and your feedback very seriously as we look to um, make a second edition. One thing that we are working on a little bit is the binding. We've got mixed feedback on the binding. Um, we're looking to other vendors that can create the book so you don't have to kind of really manhandle it to make it flat and things like that. So that's what we're looking at right now. Um, I'm going to go through some of the common questions and some of your questions that you've had in the webinar. And for those of you that don't want to hang out or can't hang out, you will get the replay. Thank you so much for attending. And um, oh, people are saying, I can't seem to find the Excel sites on, sheets on your site. What you need to do is you need to sign up and they should be delivered to you. And if, you, if they don't get delivered, email share at mypipelineproducts.com. Okay. So let me go back to some of these questions. So I mentioned why it was undated and why does it only have six months of planning? Well, one of the reasons that it only has six months of planning pages is because otherwise it would be 500 pages and we wanted to create something small that you could fit in your bag. And so that's why we had to keep it to um, only six months. And then why did the daily pages end at five? I know that often your day goes till seven or eight, I'm aware of that. My day often goes till 7 or 8 too. Well, there are a few reasons. First off, we had to compromise something to get everything to fit. And second off, I know that, well, every agent I know right now has a mobile phone and uses their calendar for their mobile phone, uh, on their mobile phone and on their computer. So I know that this should just be a backup for you, that most of your stuff is on your phone. So this is really just for jotting down things and you can check and add them to your phone later on. What if I want more space for journaling? So if you're getting into journaling, if you want to try it out, we did create a companion product which was offered and really very, very popular. I think it was our most popular item in the Kickstarter is this right here, Transform Yourself, Transform Your Business. You can buy it on the My Pipeline Products website or you can buy it on Amazon. Either way, it will get delivered to you um, in a couple of days. Um, and that's just, it's a 64-page journal with motivational quotes that will help you um, just really, really think deeply about your business and reflect on the processes um, that you have and the things you've achieved in your business. So if you're into journaling, if you wanna give that a try, there are, um, this is a 64 page journal to go along. It's a companion product to the Pipeline Planner. A lot of you got that uh, when you purchased the planner on the Kickstarter. And what if I didn't receive my planner? Well, so for these, this would be people that ordered it after the Kickstarter, that maybe um, it didn't got lost in the mail or something like that. Just in, email info at mypipelineproducts.com. There are still a few stragglers. We got one today, you know, but these could be people, if you ordered it two weeks ago and it didn't arrive, well, we, we want to track that for you. So email us at mypipelineproducts.com. And this is where you can find me questions or concerns, you can always email me, or I'm sure if you, of course, you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, um, anywhere. I, I'm, I try to be everywhere. Sometimes it's hard, but uh, d definitely feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about business planning, how to supercharge your business, any thoughts on the planner, things like that. So thank you to everyone for attending. Let me just run through 
Gmail is easily, easily and constantly hacked. So Jennifer, are you talking about Gmail account or the Google apps? Because with Google apps, I have not had that problem of Gmail getting hacked. So these are the secure business sites through Google apps for Gmail. So that was one of the comments or feedback that I had. And I'd love to hear what you're using instead if you're using Google apps, and what, if you found that wasn't working for you, what you're using instead. For those of you that are still on the call that have some feedback on CRMs, I'd love to hear that as well, so I can use that in my upcoming webinar. And for uh, the rest of you, thanks again for attending. The replay will be sent out in a few hours, and um, I'll just stay quiet if you have any uh, last questions, and just wish you much success in 2017 in your real estate business. Bye-bye.